love. The first time I had those words was in class three. She was nine. I was eight. I was a heartthrob. Her name was Quinta. She was the tallest girl in my class. She had long spindly legs, dark wispy hair. Every time she passed me, my bones went Michael Jackson. You know, woohoo! <laughs> she plucked a page from the cover of her mathematics book, mathematics, and wrote down three words. I love you. I took a piece of paper and wrote back three words. Three words is all you need to I love you. Four, you know that's bad news. I wrote, I love everybody. <laughs> Not one to be defeated, she took back my piece of paper and wrote, even Chokoraz. <laughs> I took her piece of paper and wrote back, even Chokoraz. I've thought al about love a lot since then. By the way, there were many girls who wrote after Quinta. But today, I wish to talk about the expression of love from a very different individual. My mother, Grace Lumumba Auma Ongonge Kongoro. My love story begins in the year 1990. My mother was 28. And like every 28-year-old girl, she was at the prime of her beauty. She had three beautiful children, Antonina with the round head, Evelyn with the ovular head, and me with the forehead. <laughs> Everything was headed in the right direction. <laughs> Until November the 7th of that year, my papa, Zachariah, got a cardiac arrest and died. 28 years old, with three children of seven, six, and one, my mom did everything. Forget these people who wear costumes and underwears on top of their trousers. My hero, she wore a lasso. My mom, she did four jobs. In the morning, She'd go to Marikiti and select potatoes, which she would supply to Uchumi. At 8, she'd go teach at the KMTC. At 5, she would come back to the Buruburu dispensary where she'd vaccinate children. And on weekends, my mother made juice to sell to our neighbors using a manual blender because at that time, she couldn't afford the electrical one. My mother fixed everything including us. <laughs> she was tough. I remember as a kid, we'd have arguments about whose parent was the toughest. When we got to my mom, everybody kept quiet. <laughs> my cousins, their parents used to threaten them. If you fail exams, you're going to spend your holidays at mama babies. Mama baby is my mother. My mom taught me how to tie a tie. What's love got to do with it? We grew up with the notion that love was sacrifice. Love was duty. Love was the stuff that made you attend prize giving days, swimming galas, sports days, regardless of the fact you did not have enough time. Love was the thing that made her ask my neighbors for a ride to the hospital when I got fever at night. Love is a thing that cooked chapos forever during our high school visitations. 
Love was duty. Love was sacrifice. Growing up, we did not always have a car. The 205, that came later. We used to go to school using the stagecoach. Some of you remember that thing. It was a long box on wheels. 58 people seated, 59 standing. <laughs> you know, it's just hit me. The 59th person was the conductor. <laughs> the bus used to drive from Dandora to Ngumo. And it will pass Buruburu at 6 a.m. You knew that bus was coming because you saw its flickering lights in the dark. And when you saw those lights, you ran. Because if you missed that bus, you were late for school. Mommy will hold my hand and we will run for that bus. It taught me something about love. Love holds your hands when the lights flicker. Love runs with you in the darkness, never away from you. In the dark moments of life, it will run with you. Love also realizes that some people have small feet, and so it bears them up. By the way, my mom isn't perfect. She had a short temper. When you did wrong, you were severely dealt with. My mom wasn't the kind of mom who hugged you, gave you kisses, told you, oh, Jose, I love you. That wasn't my mom. My mom, she was there. See, I feed you. See, I clothe you. See, I pay your fees. See, you live in my house. So? But that was in the early years. By the way, I also had my type. I was there. I don't care. I never asked you to bring me in this world. Paying my fees, that's my right. Every wise parent knows what response to give to a kid like that. <laughs> they actually tell them, one day you will care. Over the years, my mother mellowed. I remember we'd be driving to high school and she'd tell me, Joseph, I'm telling you to work hard because I love you and one day I might not be here. I learned something about love from that. Love grows. It's a revealing of the minds. A statement of facts that everybody knew was there all along, but people feared to say. By the way, about that 205, my sister, Ovula, <laughs> we were driving to the house. All of a sudden, she tells my mom, Mommy, I love you. I started praying, God, <laughs> let this car crash. <laughs> because I knew what was going to happen next. Jose, do you love me? <laughs> the question came. Jose, do you love me? I looked at my hands in embarrassment. A few years ago, 2006 actually. The day was November the 14th. The time was 6 p.m. I was in the dormitory. We had just finished our KCSC. I was talking to my friend Abraham and telling him how much I loved my mom and how the next day she will come for me. We hadn't talked about it with her, but I knew it, I was sure. I could feel it in my bones, like the woohoo. We went for supper and came back. And that day ended. The next day I was walking around the school trying to get myself cleared when a colleague of mine came and told me the principal was looking for me. I dashed to his office and I found him standing in the office. And he asked me, Joseph, have you finished your exams? And I told him, yes, sir. My sister then appeared from behind the curtain and told me, Joseph, 
we need to go home. I boarded the car. We drove in utter silence the whole way. The car came to a stop a few meters from our house. My sister and I alighted and she told me, Joseph, yesterday at around six, there was an accident. A careless trailer driver rammed the back of the car mom was driving in. And mom, mom died. Joseph, do you love me? Joseph, do you love me? Was all I could think of. I looked at the palms of my hands and this time it was not embarrassment. It was helplessness. I'd like to say this about my mother's love. That where it used to be there's a hole left in my world. That I find myself walking around during the daytime and falling into at night. But I'd also like to say this about her love. That her love is immortal. Or rather, her love is immortal. And the life that it had is eternal. And death, death is nothing but a horizon. And a horizon is nothing but the limits of my sight. That 28-year-old woman, 28-year-old woman's love did not see any limits, and neither will my love. Thank you.